In this part of the lecture, we're going to cover a sample program that uses a bit vector to find the intersection of two integer sets. We'll implement this program in three main steps. First, we'll initialize a bit vector capable of representing the maximum integer in our sets. Second, we'll insert each integer in the first set into the bit vector. In the last step, we'll iterate through the integers in the second set. If an integer is a member of the bit vector, then we'll print it out. With this algorithm, we'll print out the integers that are in both sets. In other words, the intersection of the two sets. Let's code it. In the main function, we'll declare a pointer to our bit vector and an integer that will be used to iterate through our sets. We'll also initialize two sets s1 and s2 of integers between 1 and 32. I've placed a 0 at the end of each array so that we know where the array ends. Because we're representing integers between 1 and 32, I'll initialize a bit vector with a maximum value of 32. After the call to init bv, the variable bv will point to an area in memory that we can use as an integer array. With the bit vector initialized, we now insert every integer in s1 into the bit vector. Notice that when s1 at i encounters 0, the loop exits. We can now use bv to efficiently determine which integers are in s1. Our next step is to iterate through s2. If in the for loop we find an integer in s2 that is a member of the bit vector, then we print the integer. Our final step is to deallocate the memory that was allocated for the bit vector. The memory pointed to by bv was allocated by the function calloc. As a general rule, every instance of memory allocation, in our case calloc, should be matched by an instance of the function free. Although this probably isn't strictly necessary for such a short-lived program like ours, it will help us maintain good habits. Let's compile and execute the program. We expect the values 32 and 5 to be printed out, since they are both in S1 and S2. If I modify the sets so that they have no integers in common, then we can expect nothing to be printed out. In the next lecture, we'll go over a bit of theory. Until next time.